here in America, very few people are actually very familiar with Renault as a brand. But overseas, they've been building incredible cars like this, the Renault Sport Megane. This car came out in 2007 and set the lap record for front-wheel drive cars at the Nuremberg Ring. Since then, two more versions of it have beaten that record again and again. But what people don't really know is that Renault Sport actually started all the way back with this, the Renault Sport Spider. And today, I'm going to show you why this is one of the best kept secrets in sports cars. I've borrowed this incredible Renault Sports Spider from the amazing folks at Lane Motor Museum. If you're ever in the Nashville area, there's no better place to go spend some time than this truly one-of-a-kind museum. Despite having more than 500 cars from all over the world made in all sorts of different eras to maintain, most of them run and drive because the folks here love them too much to let them sit and collect dust. I can't thank them enough for their willingness to let me experience this wild Renault Sport Spider. This aggressive looking sports car really is what happens when someone tries to out Lotus Lotus to one degree or another. Just look how sleek and sporty it is. Most people that we talked to thought this car was Italian, and much more expensive than it really is. More on that later. For now, take a look at how compact this car is. From bumper to bumper, it's just 149 inches in length. To put that in perspective, if me, a person who's 6'6", six six, laid down next to the Spider, I'd cover more than half of its length. To put it another way, the Honda Fit is about a foot longer than the Renault Sport Spider. And it doesn't just look fast with those functional intakes on the sides, this thing really is fast. Notice as we hover over the passenger compartment how bare it is inside. No carpet, no con air conditioning, not even a heater. There's not even a radio. The fact that there's even a passenger seat is a bit of a luxury considering what this car is focused on. And you can see that plainly evident as we swivel around to see these Recaro racing seats and the center mounted color match seat belts. This car isn't just cool when you're in it or out of it though, getting in is part of the fun. These are what Renault calls beetle wing doors, and when you open them and slip inside over the bare aluminum side sill, it's clear that speed is all this car cares about. It's so important that the speedometer isn't even there in the center gauge cluster. That's reserved for RPMs, coolant temp, and oil pressure. The speedometer is actually over on the right hand side in that little cutout of the center of the dash. Now, remember those two little handles near the side sill under the door? Those open up the trunk and the hood, which make this car look incredible. As much as this might be an inexpensive sports car, look how wild it looks. And it gives away that this is a mid-engine car. This four-cylinder makes just 150 horsepower, but that's more than enough. Look at this racy, adjustable Bilstein suspension. What's not so racy is the exhaust, which follows maybe one of the strangest paths I've ever seen. It certainly has to do with something with regulations, maybe environmental concerns, but notice how the exhaust comes out and then goes into the catalytic converter, and then it sweeps up into a resonator and then into a muffler that is hilariously shaped, I might add, and then just dumps out into the atmosphere without even attempting to look cool at all which is something that no sports car or supercar would dare to try today. Here's another view from underneath the car that shows exactly the same thing, but from a different angle. I just don't understand why they built it this way. Why do it like this? Well, the good news is that it looks cool enough everywhere else. And once you get behind the wheel, you quit thinking about how wacky the exhaust is. All right, driving a Renault Sport Spider. So the first thing I noticed is that the clutch does require some practice. No two ways about it. Um, the brakes also require practice because if you go into this drive thinking that they will behave like every other car you've ever driven, you are going to be taught a lesson. Um, they are not bad, they just take a really high amount of effort to make them function. If you've seen other reviews,
interviews I've done, you know that one of the biggest problems I have in life is that I cannot drive cars like this without looking directly at the top of the windscreen. Also the case here. If I'm honest, this is probably the worst because my head's, my eyes are actually above the windscreen. So if we catch a bug or two during this ride, you'll know why. Uh, right off the top, it's pretty comfortable in here, especially for being as light as it is. And that's honestly pretty impressive. Um, the steering wheel doesn't move, so you just kind of deal with it. So in the center dash, you've got oil pressure, RPMs, and coolant temp. Your speedometer is actually over on the right side of the driver in the center of the vehicle. And of course in this vehicle it's in kilometers per hour. Because the chassis and everything is aluminum, everything kind of makes a little more noise than you might expect. So when you put your foot down on the pedal, it makes noise. You, you can hear everything happening. Uh, when you're in neutral and you're rolling up to a stop and you jiggle the gear shift, you can hear it hitting the tunnel. So probably most surprising to me is that the ride is not utterly horrible, despite being incredibly tiny. I'll say this, the, ro the roads are better than they were in Texas for the McLaren review. Of course, that's not saying much. Uh, but something else I really appreciate about this is, you know, it doesn't have power steering, but that just makes it all the more responsive, right? When you, when you touch it, it's ready to move, it's ready to go. There's a lot of weightiness on center. Um, there's no numbness whatsoever, and it definitely benefits from that.
to the ground. This is more grounded to the ground. Much more grounded to the ground. Unreal. What a fun little car. So that's the Renault Sport Spider. And remember how I said that most people think this car is worth more than it is? These are on the market right now for around 40 grand. Now that's not cheap, but considering how rare these cars are, less than 5,000 of them ever made, and how much fun they can be in the right setting, it might just be worth a while. Thanks for joining me on this review of the Renault Sport Spider. See you next time. I'm not going to be using this audio. Yeah. Don't they know what we're doing? I mean, come on. Guys, we're trying to shoot a YouTube channel here with 10 subscribers. Let's go. Come on.